Hey, what is up mortals? It is EsperkVA here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 12 of what if Deku had a regen quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. With everything that had gone on for the first semester, midterms had crept up on everyone. The atmosphere fell as the class felt the excitement over their internships turn into dread. Sensing the emotional disparity that spread throughout the class, Mina cheerfully said, Hey, let's go to the mall this weekend! Saturday rolled around and a good handful of students were able to make time for hanging out. Of course, Midoriya dragged Bakugo with him. No, literally, he showed up at his house and had to drag him out the door because he refused to hang out with quote-unquote extras. Luckily, Mrs. Bakugo was more than happy to kick her son out of the house. Luckily, not literally. Midoriya thought that it would be good to have Bakugo socialize with good influences for once. In middle school, he always hung around with a bad crowd. So, now was the perfect opportunity to connect with his classmates. Mina excitedly offered to adopt Bakugo into her friend group for the rest of the day, so Midoriya stuck around Ida and Uraraka for a while. It was nice seeing Ida start to get back to normal after everything that had happened a week before. Ida and Momo ended up getting into a heated discussion about coursework for next year's classes for some reason, so... Midoriya and Uraraka ended up paired together. After a couple of hours walking around and shopping, the pair decided to eat lunch. While Uraraka went to go order food, Midoriya saved their seats at a table. While mindlessly scrolling on his phone, Midoriya felt the sensation of someone slinging their arm around his shoulder. He assumed it was probably Kirishima or Mina, so when he turned to face what he thought was one of his friends, his heart almost jumped out of his chest. A complete stranger had pulled up a chair next to him and was keeping a firm hold on his neck with four of his fingers. He was dressed in all black, and his face was obscured by the shadows formed by the hoodie he had on. His raspy voice, though, whispered, If you scream, I'll disintegrate you on the spot. Hearing this voice had Midoriya travel back into the moment when he was being crushed by the Nomu at the USJ. The creature had a crushing grip on him which broke his arm, and the hand-covered villain was approaching him. His face was obscured by one of the hands, but the glint in his red eyes matched that of the stranger currently threatening him. The hand villain spoke, and Midoriya returned back to the mall. You're the hand villain from the USJ! Shigaraki! Midoriya gasped. Keep your voice down, Shigaraki demanded. Well, what, what do you want with me? Who told you we would be here? Midoriya questioned. The tone in the villain's voice became annoyed. Now, now, take another look at the position you're in. Shigaraki tightened his grip on Midoriya's neck and pulled him closer to his chest. I'm the one who's asking the questions. And you'll be giving me the answers. All right, ultimatum. Midoriya begrudgingly complied and listened to what the villain had to say. I saw you with the hero killer last week. Midoriya's eyes widened in horror. Shigaraki pulled out his phone and scrolled through various photos of Midoriya fighting with Stain on the rooftop of his apartment. He kept scrolling, showing incriminating evidence of Midoriya willingly living with and being mentored by the hero killer. The last few photos Shigaraki showed made his blood run cold. It was an image of Stain and Midoriya standing on the rooftops the night of the Nomu attacks. The next was Stain jumping off said building with Midoriya jumping off after him. Then it was a photo of Stain delivering the killing blow to Native. Shigaraki put away his phone as a wide grin spread across his face. You know... It really ticked me off when my Nomu attacks were overshadowed in the news because of the hero killer. But when I got these photos, Shigaraki gave a sinister grin. I knew that you probably didn't want people finding out you're an accomplice to Native's murder. Do you, hero? Midoriya cried out desperately. That's, that's not what happened! These are taken out of context! Shigaraki replied cockily. Context? What context can you give for staying in the hero killer's home? Or being with him the night of the murder? Midoriya bit his tongue. Anything else he might say would incriminate him more. He didn't know how to get out of this situation. Try to escape, the photos would be leaked and he'd be kicked out of UA. Stay here, the villains would make him into their puppet. It was a lose-lose situation with no way out. He had to make a choice. Midoriya clenched his jaw. He refused to live out either scenario, so he decided to make a third option. Midoriya forced all five of Shigaraki's fingers onto his neck. The villain's quirk should have activated, and yet nothing happened. What was actually happening was that as his cells decayed, new cells were generated immediately. 
It gave the illusion that Shigaraki's quirk was ineffective against him, and in a way, it was. Shigaraki was taken aback. So, Midoriya threatened the villain. You can kill me an infinite amount of times, but I will always come back to haunt you. Do whatever you want to me, but I will drag you down to hell myself if you lay another finger on my friends. Shigaraki was so shocked at Midoriya's retaliation that he was too late in seeing Midoriya reaching into the villain's hoodie pocket to steal his phone. He twisted out of Shigaraki's grasp and kicked him to the ground. The freckled teen then removed the SIM card and crushed the phone beneath his heel in a fluid motion. Shigaraki got back up and the two stood on opposite ends of the table and stared each other down. But Shigaraki smiled. You must be some sort of idiot to think I don't have backup copies of those photos, Midoriya interjected. You must be some sort of idiot to not realize I have more than enough information on this thing. He held up the SIM card between his thumb and forefinger. Subscriber information module. Holds phone numbers, contacts, messages, cloud access, and even location pings. Things that can take you down just as hard as you can to me. Silence fell over the pair and tension was palpable. Midoriya smiled to himself. If the villains leaked the photos, he'd dox them. If he doxed them first, then they'd leak the photos. They were in a stalemate, but that still counted as a win in Midoriya's book. Uh, Midoriya? Who's this? Uraraka's voice caused both males' heads to snap towards her. In her arms was a tray of food that Midoriya no longer had the appetite to eat. Shigaraki responded first. Oh, sorry for intruding. I just saw my good friend here and wanted to have a quick chat. He picked up his broken phone from the floor and his smile dropped into a frown. Until next time, Izuku Midoriya. The man disappeared into the bustling crowd of shoppers and Midoriya collapsed into his seat. Uraraka set the tray of food down onto the table and right on cue the rest of the class showed up with their trays of food as well. Everyone was having a good time, and Midoriya didn't want to be the one to ruin it. Plus, he knew that Shigaraki wouldn't dare to create a scene after what happened. He fiddled with the stolen SIM card in his pocket. Are you okay? You aren't touching your food. Uraraka asked. Midoriya lied through his teeth. Yeah, sorry, I'm just stressed about midterms, that's all. Hey, don't be thinking about finals. That's why we're here, to relax, Mina scolded. The group laughed, and Midoriya felt his tension dissipate. He would have the chance to think about everything later. Right now, he should enjoy his time with his friends. He stole a fry off of Uraraka's plate and, and laughed as she playfully fought back. He missed spending time with friends. For the past year, he was always exercising and studying. He'd almost forgotten what relaxing was like. Midoriya was learning a lot about life recently. There was so much more to living and experiencing the world than hours upon hours of training for something. He'd neglected to build bonds and really live the full extent of the human experience. But this moment of just experiencing friendship was as fulfilling as being a hero. Midoriya looked at Bakugo actually looking like he was enjoying other people's company. He watched how Uraraka kept her pinky fingers up while eating to avoid activating her quirk. He saw Ida looking better than he had been for days. Despite his life almost being ruined a moment ago, Midoriya felt happy. That feeling lasted until Monday hit, and it was time to spend a week studying for finals. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing a safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services like Disney+. If you're from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies. But by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan that costs $99.99 a year. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. One week later, after a long and grueling couple days of late nights and cramming, finals week came to an end. That was, except for the Hero Course students, who had one last class to take an exam for. Their Hero Basics Training class. There were rumors circulating around about what the exam could be about, but nothing was concrete. What made the students even more nervous was the fact that if they failed, they wouldn't be able to attend the forest training camp. The students were gathered in their classroom waiting for their final to start when Principal Nezu walked in. Behind him was various UA faculty. Nezu hopped up onto the podium at the front of the classroom and the students held their breath as he revealed what their exam would be. 
For your Hero Basics training class, you'll be fighting us. Mineta almost fell out of his seat as he exclaimed, How the heck are we supposed to beat pro heroes? Nezu explained, We have you students assigned into teams of two, and assigned to a teacher to fight against in a mock battle. Every teacher here is handicapped with weights to make things more fair. Here are the rules. Your pair will have 30 minutes to capture the villain or successfully escape from the battle in order to pass. Sometimes there are villains that you cannot fight back against. So you must have the decision-making capabilities to know when to escape and when to fight. The explanation was simple enough, so the students waited anxiously as Nezu revealed who the pairs were going to be up against. Midoriya sighed in relief when he saw that he was partnered with Bakugo, but that feeling drained as he saw who they'd be up against. All Might. Midoriya wanted the floor beneath him to open up and swallow him whole so that he could disappear. Not only had he been completely avoiding the number one hero since the sports festival incident, but he knew that it would be practically impossible to capture or escape him. All Might made eye contact with him and Midoriya immediately avoided his gaze. The students changed into their hero costumes and met up in a monitor room. Midoriya wore a brand new costume, since his old one was reduced to tattered cloth. It was essentially the same jumpsuit design, but with some minor changes. He had removed his arm braces since he no longer had to deal with the bodily strain of one for all. He kept his leg braces, as it's helpful for when he's jumping off of tall buildings. He wore the mask that previously hung around his neck over his mouth and nose, and over his eyes he had a mask to further conceal his identity. He also pointedly removed the hood that resembled All Might's hair. His gifted katanas were snugly secured on his back, the name Stendhal still inscribed into the scabbard. The costume wasn't something he technically designed himself. He copied the design straight off of what he saw his future self wear when he died. Midoriya's nerves started acting up as he saw that his match was the last one and he had nine matches before him. At least it gave him time to get some ideas from how his classmates approached the final. The matches took a couple of hours before it was finally Midoriya and Bakugo's turn. Some students failed, but most of them had passed. As Mineta and Siro's fight played out on the monitors, Bakugo spoke up. The blonde waved the paper in his hands around as he complained. Look at what that rat bastard wrote about us. We're paired together because we don't get along? And I have anger issues? You have self-esteem issues? Since when was this a therapy course? Midoriya read over the paper Nezu had given him and sighed. Well, you have to admit, you have been pretty, uh, antagonistic toward me this entire semester. Especially during the battle trials and sports festival. We didn't exactly look like the best of friends. Bakugo sighed as he crumpled up the paper and threw it into the trash. Well, you got any ideas on how we're taking down All Might? Midoriya began explaining the plan that he did have. Well, I was thinking that we can escape if we, uh... Bakugo cut him off. Eh? Escape? We'll score higher if we defeat him. What? We can't defeat him? I could probably withstand a couple punches, but neither of us have the power to actually deal enough damage. Bakugo scoffed. Damn, Nezu was right. You do have self-esteem issues. Come on, have some confidence. We can totally take him down. Are you stupid? Midoriya exclaimed. Stupid? Who are you calling stupid? The two began arguing back and forth, but their banter was cut off by the end of Mineta and Siro's final exam. Bakugo and Midoriya, start heading to your assigned battlefield. Principal Nezu announced. Midoriya gulped as he followed Bakugo's lead. An awkward silence fell between them as they walked, and Midoriya, and Midoriya realized what Principal Nezu meant. Midoriya's reluctance was clashing with Bakugo's stubbornness in a way that made cooperation near impossible. One of them had to change their mind in order to make collaboration work, but both were dead set on their plans. They reached the battleground, and the moment they both set foot into the city setting, an air horn went off. Principal Nezu's voice rang out from various speakers. Izuku Midoriya and Kotsky Bakugo's final exam. Start! Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Our We the Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day.